So uh, I thought it would be nice to just look at uh, you know, how we implement lightweight para-virtualization uh, in detail. So the, the idea is very simple. You replace uh, all of the sensitive instructions in the guest operating system kernel with uh, you know, one-to-one hypercalls. Uh, we also have other replacements where you actually don't replace them with hypercalls, but you actually replace them with the emulation uh, sequence itself, but I'll not get into that here. So we typically use a trap instruction to issue this hypercall from the guest OS into the hypervisor or the monitor. Um, we encode the hypercall type and the hypercall instruction bits themselves within what we call the hint. Um, and an example I show you here is uh, the read of the CPSR. So there's this instruction called MRS, which actually reads the underlying uh, CPSR, the current pro process status register. And as I told you before, the reading and writing of the CPSR are sensitive instructions because of the mixing of the you know, privileged and unprivileged state bits in this uh, register. So whenever a read CPSR instruction is attempted to be issued by the guest OS, you want to change it to a trap instruction in, uh, so that it would actually issue a hypercall into the monitor. And the monitor would return what it wants to present, expose, as the CPSR state. And it could you know, be presenting a fake CPSR state different from what is there on the underlying hardware. And uh, you, know, you, would you would end up encoding the original instruction bits themselves as the parameter bits of the trap instruction, for example. So that when the monitor gets this trap, it's able to decode and say, OK, this was the reason I, I'm entering the monitor trap. And therefore, I emulate the semantics appropriately. Um, so that, that, that was about the CPU and sensitive instructions and how we virtualize them. Uh, in terms of the MMU itself, ARM actually has uh, you know, a, a, a paging-based MMU model. It does not have uh, anything uh, similar to segmentation like on x86. Uh, it, it has uh, you know, uh, page protection bits in, in, on its page tables, very similar to how x86 has them. Um, and given the virtual address to physical address translation existing in this uh, page table uh, support given by ARM architecture, we need to virtualize that support from, for uh, the guest's own per use of that uh, support. And the way we do that, of course, as I presented in my previous set of slides, uh, the, the, you can do it using shadow page tables, using uh, para-virtualized trusted guest page tables, which I didn't talk about. You can also use uh, hardware-assisted virtualization support and so on. But we chose to go the route of uh, using uh, shadow page tables, um, where you actually uh, intercept certain uh, guest MMU events of interest, You know, some of them being whenever the guest has uh, data and prefetch aborts, guest accesses end up in data and prefetch aborts. Uh, whenever the guest uh, makes uh, you know, TLB operations, like you know, TLB flush and TLB invalidate, and so on. Uh, whenever it actually changes its page table base, which is which we call the TTBR deltas, which is the translation table base register changes, and of course whenever it makes changes to its own page tables, the shadow page table needs to, um, you know, be coherent with the guest page table. And we lazily maintain uh, a VMM controlled trusted shadow page table, which is pointed to by the underlying hardware's own page table base register, and um, you know. Once ARM's hardware virtualization support of a two-stage page table, of a nested page table, comes about, uh, we are uh, looking forward to using that. Uh, but in the current uh, instance, we are actually using shadow page tables, software-based virtualization. So one interesting uh, uh, challenge we have on the ARM architecture while doing this shadow page table virtualization is the privilege level and access permission virtualization. So um, in the Intel x86 uh, world, because you have segmentation in addition to paging as a, as a completely you know, um, orthogonal uh, mechanism for doing protection, for doing memory protection, you can actually exploit the two different mechanisms in order to uh, virtualize the page table support for the guest appropriately. On the ARM uh, architecture, of course, you don't have that luxury, and therefore, you need to somehow uh, be able to virtualize not just the page table translations, but also the page table protection bits, like the access permissions and so on. Um, and you need to 
exploit only one available mechanism, access permissions on the underlying hardware, to do both protection of the monitor or the host operating system in a hosted uh, uh, world from the guest, as well as uh, to avoid virtualization holes, which is to avoid, which is to actually uh, faithfully emulate the protection of the guest kernel from the guest user. Um, the problem here is, you know, you, you have privilege and you have user mode, and in each mode you have, uh, you know, read only, uh, read write, and no access. And if you think about it, you have six distinct access permissions possible. You have you know, privileged, no access, user, no access, privileged, read, write, user, no access, and so on. And on the underlying hardware, of course, you only have uh, you know, three shadow page table access permission uh, you know, classes possible. So you need to be able to somehow do an injective you know, mapping, but you cannot. You need to be able to map uh, the six distinct guest access permissions onto the available uh, classes on the underlying hardware. And because of this problem, we uh, uh, ultimately had to use two different shadow page tables uh, active at any, point, uh, at, at any point for each guest page table. The idea here is you have a privileged shadow page table and a user shadow page table, and you have different access permissions mappings, uh, markings on these two different uh, shadow page tables. So whenever you are shadowing the guest uh, user mode, you actually uh, make sure that all of the guest user access permissions are shadowed appropriately on the shadow page table. Whenever you are shadowing the guest privileged mode, you make sure that all of the guests' privileged access permissions are shadowed on the underlying shadow page table. And that's what I show you in this table. Um, you know, the reds are all of the uh, privileged mappings, and the blues are all of the user mappings. And notice here that the privileged access permissions themselves on the underlying hardware actually uh, you know, are almost irrelevant from the guest's point of view, because uh, the guest is actually running completely in unprivileged mode. And the problem here, of course, is that at every, not only at every guest page table switch do you have to switch shadow page tables, but also at every guest privilege mode switch, you actually have to switch shadow page tables. So on, even on x86, when you implement shadow page tables, you, of course, have to do shadow page table switches whenever the guest switches page tables. But you do not have to do that whenever the guest changes modes. Here you do. So that's a significant, uh, you know, uh, challenge and complexity you add to shadow page tables. Um, so just to summarize how we do it, for any given guest page table, you actually have these two separate uh, sets of shadow page tables, one called the shadow user and one called the shadow privileged. 